Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the access of uh, nightly update show up. Everybody is uh, doing well. If you are uh, brand new to the channel, guys, thank you very much for tuning in, spending a couple minutes uh, of your day uh, with us. And all I ask is if you like what we're doing, if you're getting value on a day-to-day -day basis, all I ask is to click a like on the video, share, subscribe, support the channel, and we will thank you uh, in exchange. So nothing really to talk about uh, during during uh, the trading day today. Pretty much a snooze fest. Microsoft, you know, gave a nice little move. Avago had some pretty big call buying coming in uh, for uh, for uh, next year. Nvidia continues uh, to get some call buying in advance. Uh, Amazon, I will say this much: Amazon finally broke its 270 day uh, losing streak. Or at least, I think, 15 or 10. Let me say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, uh, 10, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, it was down a lot. Anyway, Amazon had a pretty big, nice move. But after, realistically, after 10, 30, 11 o'clock, it felt like uh, the market went completely to sleep. Uh, obviously, the big story uh, for this evening were two big names, uh, two big uh, heavyweights in the technology space. Uh, the first one will start off with Google, right? Uh, Google had a pretty impressive quarter. Uh, Alphabet's numbers, uh, they beat pretty much on everything, on all metrics, top and bottom line. Uh, they beat on their cloud business. Uh, so they did very, very well. If you look after the close, uh, Google is up uh, approximately $4 or so, uh, or let me see last time I checked it, or about about 2%, you know, about 2% uh, after hours. You can see it to the right of me uh, popping up here. Uh, the conference call uh, is going on now. The other big story was Tesla. And the intriguing part about the Tesla earnings were, if you guys remember last quarter, there was not a lot of optimism, not a lot of energy, not a lot of anything, right? Uh, Tesla was kind of a laying duck uh, going into last quarter, uh, the optimism was all-time lows. And I said even back then, unless they say something really horrific, uh, it might be in you know in the stock. And that's exactly what happened. We went on a big, big run. The question was going into today's session, well, can they keep the momentum going, right? We saw a lot of call buying coming in the name uh, ahead of their earnings pretty much all week. You saw the 270 weeklies, 80s, 90s. Uh, like I said, last night's video, uh, buyers were coming in for the September 300s. And when you look at uh, Tesla's numbers, they weren't great. I, I think that's the best way of saying it. They weren't great. Uh, here they are. Let's see here. Uh, earnings came out. Uh, they beat on revenue. Uh, they missed on uh, EPS, which is obviously a big deal. Uh, the estimate was $0.60. Cents. They came in light at 52 uh, their margins were a little bit better than the street anticipated. A street was looking for 17.4%. They came in for 18%, pretty good. However, they did miss a key metric of earnings, which obviously is a big deal, and free cash flow. Um, stock is currently down about $7 uh, after hours. The conference call is, obviously this is a bad tick, uh, the conference call is going to start around 5.30 uh, Eastern time. Right now, it's about five minutes to five Eastern time when I'm recording this video. So we'll see, right? By the time you uh, get this video and watch it, Tesla could be green of the day or it could be below the lows of July the 12th. Now, why is the lows below, below, bleh, below July the 12th a big deal? Well, that was the lowest close in this whole formation uh, on the 10-day moving average, and that would be below the 20. So right now, the stock is trading roughly around 239.70s, 240 area. Again, it's going to be very interesting to see what happens after the conference call. If it could get a back above today's highs, roughly around the 255.70s level, 
maybe it starts really cranking. If it starts losing uh, the lows here, and by the way, that's also the low. The July 12th lows of 233 it are also the lows from uh, after hour sessions so far today. So that's going to be a very key number uh, going into tonight or even uh, tomorrow. But overall, pretty, you know, pretty boring day. Again, that's a good thing for the Bulls. Uh, the bad news for the Bulls, they couldn't price appreciate or price improve, I should say, above yesterday's day. And that's kind of a big deal because if you watched last night's video, we talked about, well, is this a decade bounce? Uh, so far, it's a little too early to tell. Uh, a lot of names that did you know pretty okay yesterday kind of got rejected off levels that they needed to reclaim today. So as you can see here by the chart, they gapped up. They tried to reclaim the five-day. They actually did reclaim the five-day, and then they got rejected off the 20-day moving average. So we're kind of still in no man's land. Uh, the bears can still you know, at least talk a little crap uh, for another day or so. So the Bulls really need, and guys, write these numbers down. Here's what needs to happen for tomorrow. Uh, the Bulls need to reclaim back 484.5 on the 20-day, and the Bears need to get below 477.70. If they could get, if the Bears can get below 477.70, we're going to go back to the lows from a couple of days ago, from Friday's lows. And if the Bears, excuse me, if the Bulls can get back above today's highs of roughly uh, 84 and a half, we start, should start resuming the next leg to a measured interval of roughly 87, 88, which is the 10 day uh, moving uh, average. Uh, some other names, you know, you're getting a lot of names here. They're kind of in purgatory as you can, as you can imagine. Um, I do believe, uh, I do believe, you know, if Google starts going tomorrow and Tesla reverses, yeah, that's going to be a very big uh, deal for the Bulls, but right now it's it's a little bit hard to tell. It really is. Usually, I have a pretty uh, definitive opinion of what I think is going to happen the next day. Um, I think majority of the stocks are in the middle of the channels, which is not what any trader wants to hear. If you're watching this broadcast and you're an active trader, the last thing you want to hear is those dreaded words: "Stocks are stuck in the middle of their channels" because it's a coin flip, right? It's a coin flip. But sometimes you have to let the market uh, do the heavy lifting for you. Uh, so you can get a, a very clean channel. Again, we, we don't trade because the market's open. I, I get I, the idea of you're trading and putting your money on risk because the market is open because some sh schmuck on social media is telling you to go long or go short is ridiculous. You're trading because you get, you get value. You're trading because the reward risk ratio is skewed to your favor, not because you think a stock is going to make a move. Don't think, right? Don't think. That's the whole point of technical analysis is there to protect us so we don't have to think. Because again, if we were guessers, right? If we were all guessers, uh, none of us would be doing this. So it's very, very important to understand that. There are some pretty good value plays for tomorrow. Let me share some um, ideas with you uh, for tomorrow, and then we'll kind of uh, mosey along the way. Uh, NVAX uh, looks interesting. It looks very good. If you guys remember NVAX, uh, we had this pivot here a couple of weeks ago off this 1376. Nice breakout into a uh, nice breakout to the top of the channel, rested for four days. It's starting to turn. You know, keep an eye on NVAX. You know, if NVAX starts getting above last week's highs, you know, this thing could wake up. Uh, look at ARM, right? ARM is a nice looking chart of you guys. ARM stopped uh, right at the 10 day moving average. If ARM can reclaim back the 10 day moving average tomorrow, well, this thing could wake up as well. Keep an eye there as well. Amazon, right? Finally up after 290 days of straight selling. Is Bezos done selling? Probably not. I think I heard a report yesterday that I think he has an additional $5 billion for sale. Why not? You have $400 gazillion. What's another $5 billion? But let's see. You know, let's see if uh, Amazon uh, can wake up. Because at one point, this damn thing didn't even put in a downtick. Um, let's watch this thing. See if it can clear out all this daily supply in the next day or so. If it does... And reclaims back the 20 and the 10 uh, day cross. Maybe this thing could wake up. We saw a lot of 190, $200 call buying coming in uh, with short term expiration. Uh, NEXT, I've been watching this thing now literally for like three, four days. It, it looks like it's ready, right? It looks like it's ready. It feels like it's ready. Well, it's not ready yet, but we'll see uh, what happens there. Other than that, you know, you have a lot of names, like I said, all in middle of their channels, Apple. Uh, and again, it came very, very close to losing the bottom of the channel this morning before a nice uh, kick save by the market. Uh, AMD approached the five-day supply today. 
got rejected as well. Uh, you look, for example, like Netflix, right? Netflix is just completely, uh, completely irrelevant until it looks like until the next quarter. Uh, Crowd, after getting absolutely murdered uh, on the whole IT, you know, IT outage and all that good stuff, had a little bit of a dead cat balance. That's all it was. It was a dead cat balance after losing, you know, after losing nearly 60, 70 points, stock back went up today, up five. So you're getting a lot of names that are, are just kind of in no man's land. And, and guys, I get it. You know, trust me when I tell you, I get it. I was the same way in my first two, three years. I, I you know, the market's open. As Kramer says, there's always an opportunity, a bull market somewhere. But keep this in mind, right? There might be a bull market somewhere, but if you don't specialize in that something else, how are you going to attack that day? It's like me turning around and going, I trade exclusively high beta name, mega tech, uh, mega cap names. And somebody turns around to me and goes, yo, bro, the gold stocks are hot. Right? What do you want me to do with that information? So guys, trust me when I tell you, when you finally find the lane, and I don't know what lane you're, you're looking for, what you're good at, what your time horizon is, what heading, right? But when you finally find your sweet spot, your comfortability level, don't settle. Right, it's like it's like you're 16 years old. You meet that first pretty girl, and you turn to her and you go, "I need you to be my wife, dude." You're 16 years old, right? I'm not saying she's not a great girl, but play the field a little bit. See what you you know, see what you like, see what you don't like. So that's what trading is. Also, you try to figure out, you know, what's falling into your sweet spot, where you feel the most comfortable, where you feel the most happy. Uh, but most important is where's the easiest path to the goal line tomorrow. Might be a little bit of a shaky day, but obviously we're going to be watching Google for channels. We'll be watching uh, Tesla for channels. Let's see if Amazon could put in another day. Let's see if NVIDIA wakes up. More important, let the market dictate which way we go. Don't guess. Don't anticipate. You'll live a lot longer. Guys, God bless. Have a great night, everybody. I'll see you all tomorrow.